Hello, everybody, and welcome back. If this is not the first episode you're watching of Mag Magnus, 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 that's me, shows you guys how to play Europa Universalis 4. Now, last episode, we initiated a war and talked about alliance chains and proxy wars. Uh, we left off having uh, secured the Teuton two Teutonic provinces, this one and this one right here. Which is great, because now we have a Black Sea port, and what's really great about this particular Black Sea port is that it is a coastal center of trade and the estuary of the Vistula River, which gives it some bonuses, so it's an important one. And you can see, uh, bam, without having done anything else other than ask, taking the land during the peace deal, I already have 11% of the total power in the Baltic Sea Node, which has twice the worth of my node, meaning I'm gaining a whole 1.4 extra ducats in there I wasn't gaining before. That does bring us to our next point, though, and coring. When you take provinces in a war, they need to be cored. Coring basically just means this is mine, it belongs to me, and it is official. And coring has a cost of admin points. So Danzig will cost 84 points, and uh, Tocola? Let's go with Tocola. We'll take 96 points, and it is based off um, development. And if you have a core on the, if you have a claim on the land, if you have a claim, it's a little bit cheaper. But generally, uh, the most expensive things to do is to take high dev provinces that you don't have a core on. Uh, and you can see that I do have a core here, but I do not have one over here. So we're gonna go ahead, and there's multiple buttons, you, places you could do this for. From, but I'm gonna core this one, and I'm gonna core. Well, it looks like I need a one more ticks worth of points, and then we'll core that one. We are still in a war, so let's start maneuvering our troops around. Easy as can be. So at the end of uh, January, we should have enough points. Probably not. I could go down here and slap Ferrara around, but it's not really high on my list of things to do. It would get me some more war score, though. Oh, man. Uh, so, I didn't notice this at first, but Bohemia lost their war against Hungary and took a ton of land from Bohemia. One, two, three, four, five, six provinces. A ton of land. Um, but they're still at war with me. Bohemia is at peace. Teutonic Order is at peace. So, the uh, things have calmed down a good deal. There is a Hungarian army down here to deal with. And I think we're probably going... That's what we're going to do. Is we're, let's sound, send our armies down here to tackle this army. Hopefully we can get there before they... Ooh, there we go. I was going to say, hopefully we can get there before they finish the siege of Moldavia here. But they pulled back. Now we have some more points. Let's go ahead and core this. Coring takes time. And it'll go up slowly here. And coring... And uh, having over... Provinces you don't own cores on. Gives you overextension. And overextension can be pretty, can get pretty ugly. You can see right here that tw those two provinces gave me 26% overextension. And right there you can see all of the, the various things that it's going to uh, cause that will hurt my economy. All my unrest across all provinces go up. Stability cost modifier costs more. My trade power across the world goes down. Mercenaries cost more. Diplomatic reputation goes down. Improve relations, that means I can't improve relations with other countries as well. And uh, yearly corruption goes up. So there, that's all the things. Just two provinces, 26 over extension, is causing. If you get this number up really, really high, it can cause catastrophic uh, issues in your country. Civil wars, um, separatist movements, things like that. So generally, you don't want to take too much over extension. Stockpiling administration power before a war starts or during a war is a good way to make sure that's not going to cause too much of an issue because if you're sitting around, like, I only had to wait one month before I could get a core going. But if I had to wait longer, um, it, it could be an issue because I'm just sitting on that overextension waiting for those points to accrue. It's not a hard and fast rule, but it's a good idea. You know, that's one thing to keep an eye on when you, uh, when you have a war to take care of. Now, it looks like Hungary is marching deeper into Lithuania here. So why don't we... We're going to try to cut them off. All right, we have another another event. Complaints against my bailiffs. So I can execute the bailiff. I could lose 10 prestige. Or I can ignore the complaints and lose the stability. I have a little bit of prestige, but I have 
Uh, no stability right now. I'm at zero, so I'm going to take the prestige hit. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to surround this Hungarian army and engage them in these grasslands here. Hopefully we can catch them. Let's see what happened here. Austria has embraced the Renaissance. That's nice. Breslau has come under the occupation of Hungary. Not a big deal. Uh, Lithuania finished this siege, and now they've moved on to Bessarabia. We are going to catch them here, but we're going to get a crossing penalty. It's not a big deal, though. It's only a negative one. Well, we won't get a crossing penalty here. I don't think so, at least, but we might get one up here when the reinforcements arrive. Okay, so we did get one. There was a river crossing there. You can actually check to see exactly where the river crossings are uh, by hovering over this icon right here on a province. Select a province. So I could have checked that. It's not a big deal, though, because I'm, I'm pretty confident in my abilities here. Uh, so I click on this province, check river crossings. There is one ki from Kiev. It's not a big deal, though. I should be, as long as I don't roll really terribly like that continuously. Uh, uh, that was pretty bad. I have a new pope. I'm doing pretty poorly here. So I, 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 I just finished saying I'm not too worried about this. And then I rolled really badly. That's that's what some bad rolls in a battle can do. It can, it can mean the difference uh, between a, a, a win and a loss. Hungary's been rolling really, really well. And I've been rolling really, really terribly consistently. So this is where the random aspect of a battle comes in. Even though I had more men and technically more morale because... I engaged them for with two armies, and they only had the one. I've consistently rolled worse than them. They've rolled better than me on every phase of the battle, so we're going to lose this battle. We're going to run out of morale, and my men are going to retreat. One more tick. There it is. So, yeah, we lost 11,000 infantry and 4,000 cavalry to only 5,000 uh, Hungarians killed. So that was a pretty horrendous loss. Let's actually check something right here. Ah, here we go. This could help explain it. They are one military tech above me. Ah, and it's a very important military tech, too. This gives them better cavalry, military tactics, which is a huge advantage, extra combat width, extra infantry fire, and extra infantry shock. So because they were a very important tech up on me, I got creamed in that battle. And we are going to retreat. Uh, when you are retreating, uh, when you got this little white shattered retreat, white flag going. You don't have any option, you don't have any ability to control the troops until they get to where they're going. Now the Hungarian troops are going to attack the Lithuanian troops, which are also a tech level behind them. And it looks like they might win there as well. So let's, uh, yeah. They're doing pretty well. They're running out of troops, but we ran out of morale, and it looks like, uh, it looks like Lithuanian troops decided to retreat away from that battle rather than fight it out. I'm going to go up here see if I can hit Ferrara's army. It's only 8,000 men, but still, we need a way for our morale. So this is an issue for us. Hungary has gotten slapped around really hard, but we're out of manpower. As you can see right here, we don't, there are, units will not reinforce anymore because we have run out of manpower. Now what, let's, uh, let's actually do something right now. Let's check on Hungary. Go to the ledger. I'll go to military and armies, and let's check on uh, our rivals. So, Hungary still has, somehow, still has 12,000 manpower in the bank after taking that shellacking from the Ottomans, and 15 regiments of mercenaries in the field right now. So we're going to need to do something about this, because otherwise, we might end up losing this war. Uh, there is a way to get a little bit more, but it's it, right now it's dangerous for me. I can raise an additional 3,500 men. By clicking this button right here, that was a that was a horrendous loss for me. At rolling that bad and being down on um, uh, a military tech level, that was a pretty horrendous uh, 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 hit to me. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get. I need hundreds more po power points. Let's see. And we look at institutions. Where are they? So the Renaissance hasn't really gotten to me quite yet. It's, it's taking a while to spread. It got to Hungary before it got to me. That's probably why they got to be, uh, tech up. Uh, and that's that's rather unfortunate. So at the, at the juncture we're in, we either need to... Here, let's do this. Let's merge these two together. 
and then consolidate our regiments. So that means I have fewer regiments in the field. I took the ones that were left and merged them together so that they would fight more effectively. We can let Lithuania take care of some of this. Part of the problem, that, that military tech up on us is going to be a pretty huge problem. Uh, our queen consort died. Not a huge issue. This is farmland. God, we have twice as many troops, but I'm so afraid to attack them. Let's make sure our better general is in charge of this one. Yes, he is. I can also try to roll an even better... I can try to get lucky and roll an even better general. Hmm. Or we could ask Lithuania to come support us. Hungary is, 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 is losing their enthusiasm for the war, but so am I. about Ferrara? I don't think there's any way I'm going to be able to get them out now. See, what would I have to give them? Oh, they want... For, for Ferrara to, to bug out, they want me to give the, those cores back to who's its. And I'm not going to do that. So the war goal is this one right here. Ah oh, man, it is so dangerous for me to try to attack them right now with no manpower with no manpower in the bank. If we take this, this war score would 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 flip to probably about 20-25% if we held the war goal. Hmm. Losing 15,000 troops in one go was pretty bad because that was all, that was in our entire bank of manpower is the issue. And the re... Okay, we we kind of skipped over this. Um, I could get more by asking my my estates to raise some more levies. That would cost them 15 loyalty, though. That's not a big deal, though. Now, let's go ahead and do that. They, their loyalty was really high, so that got us a little bit more. And what I'm going to do is... I'm going to ask my vassals to support me... And I'm going to tell, ask them to attach to my armies by clicking this button right here and see if I can get them to come down here and help. So more troops would be nice. More troops, the better. Let's see where we get if they come down here and help. They should come right down here and try to help me out. Good. All right. Now we have 46,000 men to 14,000. And no, there are no debuffs here from crossings or, or types of uh, terrain or anything like that. So hopefully we can trounce them in the field. They rolled a 0 to a 12. That's really good for me. And just fly through their manpower. All right, so they lost, we only lost 3,000 men in that. They lost 8,000, so that was really good for me. And it looks like they're only going to retreat to here. So let's see if we can't stack wipe them. Oh, they're going to go a little bit further. I think we should try to... Uh, let, let's t say friendly armies can attach. Take that off. Let's go back to... Uh, aggressive. Or you know, Let's go to... Yeah, let's go to aggressive. Put them on aggressive. And I'm going to... It's going to co cost me a lot in terms of uh, attrition. But if we want to end this war, we got to take the war goal. So we're going to just... Speed five. Oh, who wants out? Hungary sends an, a peace offer. They want me to surrender some land to them. I'm going to decline that. And I'm actually going to go ahead. Oh, they've got 50. They, uh, I think I'm just going to stick on this. I've already rolled pretty badly, but let's just stick to our guns and hope we can take the war goal. So that's all the troops that their alliance can put together. If I could take the war goal, we'll be in we'll be sitting pretty. Now what are they now what are they saying? Same thing, sent they sent me the same offer. We're doing pretty good. We haven't rolled that badly. We started we started out pretty poorly, but we have a revolt. Not a big deal though. 
We have lost the Siege of Poznan. What are these guys? These are Separatists. Not a huge deal. Oh, we just lost a military leader. We're definitely going to have... Now that they're just asking for a different province. Let's see, what do we got? Benign Neglect. Government that governs the least, governs the best. So we can get trade power up, tax modifier up, or manpower up. Right now we need manpower, so I'm going to go manpower up. I'm going to ask my friendlies to come attach to me again. Because it looks like they're coming for me. And that Hungarian army, that is scary. Oh, nope, they're stuck on a fort. So, nope. Uh, siege, guys, siege. This will give me a ton of war score if I can take it. Come on! I just need to s roll a good number, guys. Good number. There we go. Now we're up into the positives. Alright, let's, um... We're just gonna ignore these rebels for now, because we can deal with them later. Oh, no, we don't want to do that. Is this a... That's a Highland province. I don't think I want to attack them there. It's not gonna give me uh, the kind of boost I want. I'm using shift click right now to path exactly where I want to. Because they were trying to get me to go through um, enemy territory or enemy controlled provinces here. I don't want to do that. And if we take that one back, we'll get even more war score. Which we did, 18%. I'm going to try to take out Ferrara's army. Now we could definitely end this in a white piece if we wanted to. Because this is getting a little ug a little bit ugly. But, um... Let let's see what we're looking at. Let's clear off the offer here. And... Considering this is really the secondary uh, purpose of this war, the, the primary purpose was to hit the Teutonic Order, the secondary purpose here is not that big of a concern of mine. Of mine. I would like to take some land... But it would definitely piss off some other people. Or I could give some, try to give some land to uh, Moldavia down here. So to give them... If I wanted to give it to Moldavia, we went over this once before. I have to transfer uh, control of the province to them. And then... Let's try that again. So I, could take a, I would take a province. And they would take a province. And then I'm going to ask for their money. Some of their money. There we go. So let's send that demand. And they accepted. So that was a pretty costly war. We lost 63,000 troops. They lost 19,000. That was pretty ugly. But now we have rebels to deal with. And we have more provinces to core. Well, we, we have one more province to core. Uh, I should be... Let, let's try to see if we could get um, these guys to help me out with the rebels. So let's put them on supportive again. Make sure they're set to attach. And it looks like they're coming for me. No? Hmm. That's a shame. I might have to uh, wait till I get a get little bit more manpower. Before I can fully deal with that. So we gained a core up here. This one belongs to us now. We have a core. Still working on Danzig, and we are working on Zemplen. It's really hoping that Huzitz would come help me, Lithuania. And speed 5, got the other core. Love that noise. So they have taken the the fort here, but again, I don't want to fight them with uh, without enough men. And I don't have enough men right now. I have a decent general. I have a better general than they do. But I have few... Oh, they're going to attack me. Interesting. They took a river crossing penalty. Yeah, I wasn't... I'm a little surprised at that. I, I didn't expect them to attack me, but it worked out to my benefit because they lost. They took a ma minus one and lost. Rebels generally... With, with, a with a couple exceptions, like noble rebels... Oh, you know what? Let's pause the game. Uh, with a certain no kind of rebels, the, they will retreat and you'll have to chase them down. But most just break and, and disappear. 
I feel like I've been playing just a little too fast this episode. I'm, I'm going to have to slow down. I wanted to end that war. But we, we took two provinces from, from Hungary. Unfortunately, during the war, they, they got a military tech up on us. Some techs are not that big a deal. Some techs are huge. Some techs make a big, 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 big difference. Any tech that gets you... Uh, where is it? Uh, military tactics. Military tactics reduces the damage your units take in combat. The higher, the better. So they had a, a military tactic up on me, so they took way less damage than I did. So that's proud of the reason why I wasn't dealing... Uh, it didn't seem like I was dealing out that much, because they had a tactic advantage on me. And going from 5 to 6 gets you a ton of bonuses. Some, some techs don't get you... You know, just get you, like... You know, a little bit of extra supply or something like that. Some techs make a big difference. Five to six make a big old difference. So now we're going to send our men back over to uh, this province. We're going to siege it back down. But before I forget, completely forgot about this. We have angry people that are about to get angrier. So right over here, uh, we looks like we're about to have Teutonic Separatist fire. Now, Separatist factions will always try. Uh, they're trying to break away from you. Separatists are trying to create their own country separate from you. So if you let them succeed or accept their demands, you lose land and they will start their own country. So if I clicked accept demands, I would cede uh, Tukola here back to the Teutonic Order. So I give it, they want to go back, but I, I, I was saying they would form another country. Sometimes they form another country if they don't have anywhere to go back to. That's what I meant by that. Um, you can help, you can boost up your stability, which lowers uh, the, their... Uh, chance to hit or you could use some military power points to crush them I almost never do this I feel like it's a waste so I oftentimes I would rather fight the rebels than uh, pay points to make them go away but in this case could be bad so there's a couple things you could do to lower unrest the way rebel factions work is that every province that has unrest uh, that that is interested in this, a similar goal will uh, will add to the chance to fire. So as you can see here, when the progress reaches 100%, the faction will revolt and a couple of rebel armies will spawn. The faction has a 12.8% 12 12 chance of increasing the progress by 10% each month due to how much unrest is in their provinces. At this pace, the reduction revolt will be in about 0.7 years. So with this one province in, like, really, really bad turmoil, there's a strong chance they're going to hit. There's a couple things I could do to lower their unrest. Uh, whenever you conquer a, a province, it has um, a base amount of separatism, which is basically just the population being pissy because of a change in over ownership. But you can see here, our war exhaustion is adding four points. Our overextension is a little bit adding a little bit. And it uh, looks like that's all we can deal with right now, but... If we wanted to try to deal with it, what we could do is we could try to reduce our war exhaustion. Now, this does decay out, or we could pay a couple ad, uh, yeah, admin points. We could pay a couple admin points for it to go, to, for it to go down by two points. Eh, two points, that's going to lower it by two out of a total of 13. Not that bad. We could check here to see how many men are going to spawn, and we could just fight them. Sometimes that's a good, a good option, is just beat them up. I don't have a lot of men, though, so beating them up doesn't seem like a great idea. You can increase your stability for every stability point you have. I believe it lowers your unrest by two. And you're spending points, so... Hmm, I don't know if I really want to spend points right there. Another thing you could do is to increase their autonomy. If you make the region more autonomous, they are happier. So I can increase the autonomy by 25 and it will lower my unrest by 10 and it will last until July 16th of 1503 and it is July 16th of 1473. So I got 30 years of lower unrest. Now I really don't want to fight these rebels right now so I'm going to go ahead and click this. That lowers it down to 3.7. So now if I check this, it says the next revolt will happen in 2.3 years on average. Now there's still the possibility that I could get unlucky and I can get the revolt uh, the next time the month ticks over. So there's something we can do to help this just a little bit further. And that is to take some military troops and station them in the region and hope nobody spawns before they get over there. So we're going to walk our troops over. So still nothing. All 
And we're going to see what happens when the troops get there. Unrest is zero. Ooh! New thinkers arise. One of five options will happen. Uh, 20%, so I get a uh, one in five chance of getting a new person. So, unrest went to zero. So, as you can see, uh, about two-thirds of the way down, friendly troops minus 3.83. Friendly troops in a province will reduce unrest, but only up to, I think, about five points. So, you can't just stack a million men and have every, and, you know, have all of your unrest go away. It only stacks up to a certain amount, but it can make the difference in some regions. So now, Teutonic Separatists have zero unrest, and that rebel faction is going to decay out till it doesn't exist anymore. Now, we still have this one, the Zemplen. They're very unhappy as well. So what we're going to do is, they already have a really high autonomy. Let's just make them fully autonomous. Make that unrest go down. And we have Danzigian Separatists as well. So Danzig is pissed off too. I'm going to do the same thing here. 100% autonomy means that province isn't producing anything yet, but I can't afford to have rebels at the moment. So now... Oh, hang on. Now, we have 15 years and 17 years before those factions, those Separatists, are problematic for me, and I can handle that. In 15 to 17 years, I'll be able to handle it without any issue. Now we have enough money, so we can go ahead and repay our loan. Took the money away from my bank, but it also means we're not paying interest on that loan anymore. Now, we do have one more pop-up. You can make a state. States are not super important zones. They're just zones that exist uh, for administration purposes. And if you go to the state and territories map mode, you could see a little dark line that separates them. You can have a, you can only have a finite number of states, and there it is, stability and expansion. It's listed right here. Uh, yellow is territories, green is states. Territories don't really produce anything, but states do. So if I go over here to Danzig, and I tell it to make Danzig from a territory into a state, it'll start producing much more. So I will have to pay an extra 1.4 ducats in maintenance, because you have to pay state maintenance on every state you own. But I will increase my income by 0.75 ducats per month due to the, uh, the tax base and production base I'm getting from there. And then, I got a cord again. Just like that. I gotta pay that cost again. If you already have... Um, let's let's see if, I, if there's a region where this would come into play. So it looks like... That's kind of hard to see where the state lines are. So Mazovia, Mazovia, Mazovia. Okay, here we go. So I control three provinces in the state of Mazovia. Lithuania controls this one right here. That's why it's hashed out. So if I took this from Lithuania and cored it, I would pay the full core cost one time. Because Danzig was not in a state I already owned, I paid half its total core cost, and then I paid the additional 50% once I made it a state. So it, it was pretty pricey to take Danzig. I think I paid 168 admin power points to make that a state, but it's going to pay off. It's going to take a little while, but it's going to pay off. Making a little bit more ducats here. It's going to start paying off in taxes. It's a good. It's got some good development. It's got a good tax base and good production, so it'll pay off in the long run. All right, so I played ahead just a little bit. Uh, I retook the rebel-held fortress down here. As you can see, I uh, have no unrest in these provinces anymore, so I can I can reduce the army maintenance on my army to save a little bit of, bit of money. I'm not going to reduce it all the way down because these guys need to reinforce. I believe there's 22 regiments here. 23 regiments. And uh, if you have your army maintenance all the way down at the bottom, they won't reinforce. So as men come in, I do want them to reinforce. And what other thing I was going to look at before we wrapped up today? This episode has kind of been a little bit all over the place because I'm just, I'm just playing naturally and, well... Semi-naturally, I'm doing some odd things like pressing claims on Bohemia and no CB wars that I wouldn't normally do just to show you guys some stuff. But there is one other thing I want to look at, and we're going to look in the government tab right here. 
And if you go to, well, we'll go back to this in a hot second. If you go to Danzig, you can see the culture here is Prussian and it's not accepted in Poland. Go to Warsaw, it's Polish that is accepted and it's in green. You can see being a, a culture not accepted in my country gives them negative modifiers. I'm, I'm, they're always going to be a little unhappy. They're always going to produce less strength, uh, less tax. They're always going to be opposed to missionaries coming in and so on and so forth. There is one thing you can do about that. If you go to the government tab, you have a list of accepted cultures and a list of not accepted cultures in your country. And you can grab a couple cultures and promote them so that people are happy, basically. You can pay you pay 100 Diplo power points per, per accepted culture. And if it's grayed out, it means you can't do it. It means there's not enough. They have to have a, I believe it's like at least 20 development Something like that. I can't remember if it's a percentage or if it's just a flat amount of development, but they have to have, they have, they can't be a tiny, tiny, tiny little minority. But Ruthenian, which is down here, and Prussian, which is up here, we have enough to make them accepted. So I'm going to go ahead and pay that. Now they flip over to this side. I'm going to promote Prussian as well because we're probably going to be taking more Prussian land. And as you can see, of the uh, Polish is, I'm Polish, so Polish is always going to be fine. Of the maximum of three promoted cultures, I got two now. Now, you can expand this later in the game. But if I go to Danzig, you can see that that's no longer red. That's green. And these guys are going to start producing at full, uh, their full amounts, their full taxes, their full production, their full manpower. And that unrest is also going to be gone because they're now an accepted culture. Oh, and I just realized we could grab one more idea this one is reduction in inflation cost and i'll show you where that is boom right up here you can see this guy going a little bit higher but let's go to our economy and you can see this little graph right over here and there's a little yellow arrow and a percentage this is my inflation this is gra this is just over time uh, if it's green and it's going down, it means your inflation is going down by itself. If it's red and it's going up, it means your inflation is naturally growing. You get inflation by relying on gold mines. Uh, and actually, I believe there's a gold mine around here somewhere. Can't remember exactly. There it is. Uh, to roll here as a gold mine. It's not gold is a is an interesting commodity. You don't at, you don't sell it. You just mine gold straight out of the ground and go straight into your coffers but say you're mining a lot of gold that'll cause your inflation to go up if you uh let's say take a lot of gold in a war so i beat up you know hungry and i took 150 ducats that influx of money will make my inflation go up just a little bit you can see that was that right there that little rise this is over three years was the money i took from hungry now you can pay to have this go down this button right here, pay normally 75, I just reduced it by 10% by taking that idea, and that'll reduce your infl inflation by 2%. Now this is really low, you can see that it just makes everything cost a little bit, a little bit more in ducats. It's really low, it's a, it's below 2%, so, you know, paying to have it, excuse me, paying to have it reduced is not the greatest idea in the world, because that'd be a little bit of a waste of power. This number can get really high. If you, if you have it base ticking up and you're taking money here, you're taking money there, you're taking money in peace deals, you have money coming in from colonies and stuff like that, that could get really ugly. You can get inflations that get so high that it's really wrecking your country. That might be a good idea to uh, to reduce your inflation and save, save yourself some money. Or you could take ideas that reduce your inflate your base inflation. I believe that's in here somewhere. Can't remember... Ah, there we go. Yearly inflation reduction of 0.1. So yeah, there there are places you can go to get less inflation. But unless you're heavily relying on gold coming in through gold mines and through wars and stuff like that, inflation usually isn't that big of a deal. I think I'm going to leave this episode here. It's been a little bit of a rambly one. Uh, I don't know. I felt just a little bit off during this episode. We played pretty quickly and we did a bunch of stuff. It was mostly talking about finishing up that war, um, dealing with rebels, and uh, going over inflation. So hopefully you learned something here. I hope you have at least. And I'll see all of you guys next time.